So this is about my thesis work on um, combining our research from two different areas to help people make sense of large graphs. So my thesis is about large graphs. So I work with large graphs, and uh, some people would call them uh, large network data. So I'll give you some examples of what I mean by that. So the internet is one giant graph of over five, uh, 50 billion web pages. So each node in the uh, graph or network would be a web page, and then link would mean like what web page uh, linking with the other. Um, and Facebook is another example of over 800 million users now. And then uh, even in academia, you can build a citation network out of papers. So each node in this network or graph would be a paper or an article, and then an end would mean one paper citing the other. And there are many, many more examples that you can imagine. Like in Twitter, you can construct a who follows whom graph, uh, where each node is a person. Uh, from Amazon, you can find out uh, what uh, who buys what, so it's what, who buys what graph, where each node is either a person or a product. And also, like cell phone network, you can find out who calls whom. And even in biology, uh, you can um, find out how proteins interact with each other. So you can construct protein-protein interaction network. So these graphs are not only getting bigger, uh, they are also made, getting many more of them. And uh, these graphs provide us with new opportunities <coughs> that I've never seen before. So they can allow us to better understand how people interact, for example, like through Twitter or Facebook, uh, help us understand or predict um, business trends, like from Amazon or, or our at and cell phone network, and also to prevent diseases if we know how proteins interact. So here are some of the example live graphs that I personally analyzed uh, that I discussed in the thesis. Uh, so these graphs are in the order of a million or a billion of nodes and edges. So the sec uh, second one is the largest one. Uh, which is from Symantec. So it's a graph that describes 30, over 37 billion um, relationship between machines and files. So a file will be linked to a machine if the file appears on a machine. So there are over 37 billion uh, such relationships. So having all these bar graphs or big data uh, seems to be great. So they, they seem to provide us with a lot of opportunities. Um, but are there challenges as well? So I would say yes, and I would, we would argue that the most fundamental one is due to one single number, number seven. Um, would anyone in the audience know what the significance of it? They shout out if you want. Anyone want to try? Seven cents. <laughs> yes. 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 Which says that um, an average person can actually process a very small number of things at a time, seven plus or minus two. Um, so that means, well, even if we have all this data, this fantastic thing, we really want to boil it down to a small number of things that people can really handle and really understand and work on at a time. So that means we want to turn this uh, big data into insight, really important things. So how do we do this? And what do we need? So this is what my thesis is about. And my approach is to combine research from two uh, research area, data mining and uh, human-computer interaction, to do that. So these two, two domains have actually long been developing methods to help people make sense of network data, uh, but their approaches are very different. Um, on the data mining side, um, it would focus on methods that are more automatic, um, and methods would be like, uh, summarization, clustering, classification, and so on. And these methods are in general more uh, scalable because that's the main focus of data mining, one of the main focus. Okay, and on the XGI side, uh, the methods are more user driven and iterative, and that would also consider uh, the user's tasks and goals. And uh, some example method would be, say, uh, like visualization or uh, methods related to interaction. And the, those methods are in general less scalable because scalability is usually not the main focus of that. So you would say, well, so it seems like both areas have been doing a lot of work together, uh, I mean separately, so why do we need them to work together? So here's a um, motivating example. So suppose we are analyzing a cell phone network shown here. Um, so each node in the network would be a cell phone user, and then an edge will be connecting uh, one user to the other if one user has called the other. 
Um, and suppose you want to look for an object. Is there any real interactions among users, or is there any normal alterations, and so on? So how would we do that? So if we, we apply the traditional HCI trend or information visualization mantra, um, which, which says, so you want to start with an overview, and then you will zoom in uh, to a particular area, and then get more details. Then it probably doesn't quite work in this scenario. The reason is, well, as you can see, here we show everything. But then it's, it looks like a hairball. You probably don't even know where to start. But if you apply some techniques from data mining and say anomaly detection, then what it can do is it can help us pick out some possibly interesting thing, like some anomalous node in the network. And then these could be the good starting point for people to look at. But there's a problem with this. So even if the algorithms are able to pull those uh, possibly anomalous things out, and, or even rank them, it still doesn't tell people why those are anomalous. So you, that, that's what probably give you a ranked list. But then if you are now um, going to apply some methods from XCI, say visualization or interaction, then we can help people under, better understand what's happening. For example, if we visualize the connection between the first four uh, detected nodes, then we see that probably it forms a click, which is really anomalous in many ways. Or if we provide the right interaction techniques for people to say expand on the last node, then we see that probably it's the, the, the center of the star. For example, it could be a, a telemarketer uh, in a cell phone network who makes a lot of calls to many people, but then those people don't really talk to each other. So it's the center of the star. So this is a very simplified example of how data mining and XCI may be able to work together. And my thesis work is about how to take the best of the both worlds, merge them, combine them, uh, to develop new methods and new tools to help people make sense of them. So this is my thesis statement. So my statement is, by bridging data mining and human computer interaction, it would enable people to better understand and interact with uh, nodes in the billion uh, scale. And we would do it through three uh, interrelated uh, areas. So the first one is what I call attention routing. So it will answer the question of how to help people locate good starting point. And the second one is how we can incorporate user feedback into the rock mining process to help people better expand uh, from those starting points. So better explore the data. And then the third uh, area uh, is about how to scale up all these methods. So it's not a separate area, but it's inter integrated into both of them. So in this talk, I will uh, specifically call out the uh, scalability issues and how we can overcome them. <coughs> so for scaling up, we can leverage parallelism from Hadoop, uh, uh, parallel computation framework, um, and also say staging of operation, how do we separate operation in different stages and do some uh, in the cloud, some uh, locally. And also do approximation, uh, uh, approximation. So this is actually also the outline of my talk. So in the first part of my talk, I'll give two examples of how we can do attention or help people find good starting point. So I'll give two examples. The first one is called a system called Bololium. It will help people find malware or best software on your computer. <coughs> and the second example is called Lampro, <coughs> help people find Froster or bad guys on, in online auction. And the second part of my talk about incorporate user feedback into graph mining process, I'll give you an example a system called Apollo, uh, which combines visualization and machine learning to help our uh, exploration. So these three systems are actually only three of um, the many other systems that I've developed, uh, which have in data mining, human computer in action, and some of them are in the middle. So the three of them uh, are highlighted here. So following and then from purely data mining, while Polo is at the intersection of data mining and human computer in action. So I start with Polonium. 